Right guys, what we have here is a back wall made pretty much the same as most of the others that I've done apart from I've glued on a bit of branch there, branch coming up here. It's just a mix match of various different bits and bobs just to give it a woody sort of effect. But as you can see, everything's all completely sealed front and back basically the whole thing is waterproof as such so what we're going to do we're going to add it into tank like this uh, what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to jazz it up with some greenery first um, just to make it look a little bit more appealing and then um, we'll add the other bit substrate a bit of cork bark for a hide moss and everything I've got a GV, GVT blondie to go in here so let's get started right guys what we're just going to do easiest way to do these bits is just to do it while it's actually out of the enclosure itself gives you a lot more space to work as usual we've got a faithful old hot melt glue gun which does the trick many of these things it's just instantly glues everything down. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Any annoying bits is the stringy bits. just to sort of make it less bland, to be honest. As I said, this, uh, these tanks basically cost, well, the um, back horse themselves cost nothing. All this stuff is found outside, you know? when you're paying sort of nothing for it as i said you you, you can go out and you can go b and q's and stuff and buy a whole sheet of board or whatever just go try and find a local wood machine in place and see if they've got some off cuts which they usually do or even i don't know even if you're breaking down an old wardrobe or something anything with a board once you seal it and you stuck everything to it, it doesn't really matter what you use i wouldn't use chipboard for one chipboard's just rubbish any sort of ply board even a hardwood anything it'll all work all we're doing this we're just going to add a few little bits and then Start adding the rest, the substrate and stuff. As it said, it's just a quick rehouse. This one, I think you've all got the gist of how to make these bark back walls before. But this one just goes to show that you could just use like bits of on here, like bits of uh, cork bark that are broken off, and I've snapped them off to make them into size. Just stick them in. It all blends in in the end and you you know um might as well just use everything you got rather than going out and buying more and more and more just use what you got and even all this like, greenery and stuff you go on ebay as long as you don't put reptile in front of it of your search you pick up like 
plants, leaves, all that sort of stuff for next to nothing. You know, I think I've got a massive bunch of like ivy leaves and stuff for two quid. And that sort of price is, you can't really, you know, grumble. And it's all safe, it's just plastic and fabric leaves and what have you. You know? So you can't really grumble. But it's when you go and, right, done a little sort of uh, bushy effect there. Right, we're gonna put that in the tank and then we'll start adding more bits. <coughs> then we've got the back wall fitted. You can sort of start to see. You might want to add a couple more bits. Just to liven it up a little bit. That's a good thing, where you get like the creases and stuff. You can just poke the stems of these plastic plants into the back wall. And that's it, right, let's get some substrate. Right, there we go. Plenty of substrate in there, what dish. Loads of moss, moss to keep the humidity up. Tea blondies like it nice and humid, so. But, yeah. Nice little cave to go in there. Well done. It's time to catch the spider. There you go. One tea blondie just kicked half a ton of hairs at me. Yeah, it's not forever home, but be all right for a little while. It's got to be better than what it was in, which was nice, really. I can't stand plastic tubs, so hopefully it'll make it nice little home in here. Alright guys, thanks. Mm -hmm.